So we have a small ball A of mass 2.5 kilograms held at rest on a rough horizontal table. The fact that it is rough means there is friction, so this ball experiences a friction force. We're told that the string passes over a pulley and that's fixed at the edge of a table. The other end of the string is attached to ball B. That has a mass of 1.5 kilograms. It's hanging freely. It's a meter above the ground. The system is released from rest. The string is taut. And it says in the question that the resistance to motion of A from the rough table is modeled as having a constant value of 12.7. That would be acting towards the left. The reason it acts towards the left is because, as you can imagine, B will want to fall down, and that will pull A along with it towards the right. So friction always acts in the opposite direction to motion, so therefore towards the left. B has a weight force of 1.5 G, and A will have a weight force of 2.5 G, but I'm not going to bother drawing that because we're only going to be considering the horizontal forces on A. And the other horizontal force on A would be tension, so T, the string pulls it towards the right. And similarly for B, the tension force will be upwards, the string pulls it up. Okay, it says in the question, ball B reaches the floor before ball A reaches the pulley. Well, that would mean that the distance that we have here must be more than a meter. And then we have our assumptions. It says the balls are modeled as particles, the string is light and inextensible, and the pulley is small and smooth. So for the first part, it says write down an equation of motion for A, and then for part two, it's for B. So we have all the forces that we need. What equation of motion means is we're going to be writing out the equation F is equal to MA, but for each of these individual particles. So the F in F is equal to MA represents the resultant force. So let's start with object A. We know that B is going to be going downwards, and then A is going to be going towards the right. Those will be the directions of acceleration. So we know that B will accelerate downwards, and A will accelerate towards the right. If they accelerate in those directions, those would be the directions of resultant force. Resultant force points in the same direction as the acceleration. The resultant force is what causes the acceleration. So then for object A, if it's accelerating towards the right, that would mean that the tension force T must be bigger than 12.7. And the overall force towards the right, which is the resultant force, would be T minus 12.7. And that will be equal to 2.5A. And that is our equation of motion for object A. The 2.5A is just mass times acceleration. The mass of A, not the whole system, because we're just considering A here, so the mass of A multiplied by its acceleration, which I'm calling A. And then for object B, it's a very similar kind of thing. The resultant force is downwards in this case, in the same direction as acceleration. That means the 1.5 G will be bigger than tension, so the overall downward force would be 1.5 G minus T, and that will be equal to MA. So this is your resultant force F, that's equal to MA. The mass of B is 1.5, and then we times that by acceler acceleration. So that's part A done. For part B, it says, hence find the acceleration of B. So to work out the acceleration, let's look at the equations that we have. So we have these two equations here. We can solve them simultaneously to work out what A is. Easiest way is to simply add the two equations. So when we add them, the t that we have here and the minus t that we have there, t plus minus t will be zero, so they cancel out. And these two terms, that would become 1.5g minus 12.7. The right-hand side, these two added together, that will be 4a. You type in this into your calculator, g is 9.8. The left-hand side ends up being 2. And then we get our acceleration to be 2 over 4, or a half. And that's part B done. We've worked out the acceleration of object B. So for part C, it says, using the model, 
find the time it takes from release for B to reach the floor. So this is going to be a SUVAC question. So we are after, for part C, we are after time. Time taken to reach the floor. We know the distance traveled is one meter. We've worked out the acceleration from the previous part, 0 0.5 meters per second squared. And it says in the question that the system is released from rest. So that would mean that the initial speed of B would be zero. And the SUVAT equation that relates those four things together is S equals UT plus half AT squared. Putting everything in, we get one. So U times T is zero times T, which will just be zero. So zero plus a half times A, A is also a half, times T squared. So this is the same thing as one is equal to a quarter T squared. Bring the four over, T squared is four, and then square root. So square root of four is plus or minus two, but it's time, so we're not going to consider the negative value, so just two. And then finally, for part D, it says it was found that it actually took 2.3 seconds for ball B to reach the floor. We got two. So the actual time is a bit longer. Using this information, comment on the appropriateness of using this model to find the time it takes for the ball to reach the floor and suggest an improvement that could be made. So remember that we had some assumptions for our model. We assume the ball has no dimensions, that it's a particle. We assume the pulley is smooth. We assume the string is light and inextensible. All of those things would only approximately be true. And sometimes they're not very true at all, in which case your times would be wildly off from what you predict. So if your pulley were to have a significant amount of friction, then it would be the case that whatever force is in the string at this point would not be transmitted all the way through to A because of the friction in the pulley, and that would mean the acceleration of the system is lower. So the time taken would be longer. So that could be happening here. So what we could say for part one, we could say our model is not appropriate because the time actually taken is longer than the time that we predicted. And then we can give a reason as to why this could be. So we could say, because in reality, the, the pulley has some friction, or in reality, there would be air resistance, which we haven't taken into consideration. Or the friction that we have here, the 12.7, is not a constant value. That's something that we also assumed. It says over here that the friction is a constant value of 12.7 newtons. That could change. And if that changes, then that will change the overall acceleration and therefore time it takes would be to hit the floor. And then for the second part, the improvement, well, we just say to include those things. So model the air resistance, consider friction in the pulley, etc.